YouTube. Thanks for tuning in to The Light. This is Jake. Uh, also, I want to shout out to everybody who's been subscribing and liking the videos. I really appreciate you folks. Uh, also, please do check out the artists who I can feature here on the channel, The Southern Sinners, as well as Green Matter. Uh, now, without further ado, I want to get into the news because we've got a big week for cannabis. As Bloomberg Law reports, cannabis and CBD are stars of Trump's budget request for this year's FDA funding. Top line priority, $5 million in funding to conduct research and inspections. Uh, they're also going to be having a crackdown on false CBD products out there where people are marketing um, – low-end oils that may or may not actually have CBD for $100 a bottle. People are also marketing cartridges still that might not actually be um, cannabis cartridges, especially in the black market. So the FDA is cracking down on false CBD products. And we also are going to see this research advancing the industry. They may be advancing more patented products as well as medicines like that of Zynerba Pharmaceuticals and GWPH as well, uh, GW Pharma. Uh, now, this research should also start to provide more guidelines for the proper utilization of CBD for uh, medical use, uh, not just for civilians, but possibly even for battlefield military use. We see the um, military has been funding research for CBD as well. And now we see Hemp Inc. signs a letter of intent uh, to buy CBD ingredients from One World Pharma, S-A-S. Uh, now, they're buying this CBD out of Colombia, but One World Pharma is an Israeli company. Uh, now, Hemp Inc. is buying pharmaceutical-grade uh, crude oil CBD and CBD distillate at competitive market pricing. Now, they've got a mutual agreement for roughly 3,000 kilograms per month from One World Pharma. And One World Pharma says that they are elated at the opportunity to work with Hemp Inc., one of the most well-known and well-established hemp companies in the world. Uh, now, this is also big stuff for One World Pharma, as this is entry into the U.S. market, and it's amazing for them as Hemp Inc. becomes a big mover in CBD with international sales channel uh, now from this Israeli company, One World Pharmaceutical. This should be seen as well, uh, I believe, as a slap in the face uh, to those who have tried to delegitimize Hemp Inc. As uh, Hemp Inc. is starting to show itself to be a powerhouse with high-end hemp and CBD. Uh, now, this deal is good work. Uh, this is really impressive for both companies, and I think this also shows the strength of the direction and leadership with uh, Bruce Perloin and the management at Hemp Inc. I'm very happy to see that as an investor, and I think that this should be an exciting quarter for Hemp Inc. as they've also announced the shipment of their LCM materials for this weekend out of North Carolina. Uh, so revenues are incoming, not for CBD, but for industrial hemp, as industrial hemp is first to the line. They're really with uh, very few few hurdles compared to CBD and consumable hemp, uh, but Hemp Inc. is doing a lot of big things with this deal with One World Pharma, getting CBD out of Colombia, opening up an international sales channel, and their King of Hemp store is coming soon to Kingman, Arizona. I'm really excited to see that open, and I'm going to have to go down there and check it out when it's getting going uh, sometime this summer. Uh, now, Aurora Cannabis continues cost-cutting and aggressive restructuring of priorities as well. Uh, so this week we're watching them as they're starting to move toward a focus on premium quality medical and recreational cannabis um, instead of endless production capacity expansion. They're focusing on this vertical integration of cultivation, processing, extraction, many brands, popular derivative products, and best-in-class production cost per gram, which may still improve with less focus on expansion. 
Uh, now, they'll be reporting earnings this Thursday at market open around 8 a.m. Eastern time. And Wall Street seems to be confused, pessimistic, unsure of the thesis and focus from last year. Um, last year, it was all about endless production expansion. So what's going on now as Aurora Cannabis has let their CEO, Terry Booth, go? Uh, he's actually in the background now as uh, part of the board, really still involved with the company. Uh, but they've also let Cam Batley go. And now they've cut about 15% of their job force, mostly in contract workers who would have most likely been constructing the uh, important facilities that they were continuing to expand. Um, now, I am a little bit less worried than Wall Street, and I, for one, believe that Aurora is showing itself to be one of the quickest to adapt First to grow over 500,000 kilograms per year uh, projected. Now they're also in these market conditions adapting and being one of the first to pull back and dial it in. Uh, but we're also watching Canopy Growth, who's reporting earnings on Friday. So this is going to be a massive week for the cannabis industry. Uh, Canopy Growth and Aurora Cannabis are both reporting earnings. We see still this push for CBD regulation as the FDA is being prompted through the budget proposals, even out of the executive branch, to regulate this new product. Uh, so this is going to be a really exciting time, a big week and a big month here coming up in March for the cannabis industry. I can't wait to keep covering it, and I can't wait to see what Hemp Inc. does with the King of Hemp store that's going to open up. Now, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in again. I really appreciate all of the love and support. I'll see you again, or I'll talk to you, I guess, in the next video.